Hi everyone, this is the third video in these little five minute segments of uh, creative ideas with new materials. Um, haven't quite thought of a name for this yet. If you have any ideas, just put them in the, the comment section. I'd be glad to entertain them. Right now we're working with some paper clay. So paper clay is a really neat material. It's sort of half pulp paper, half clay. It, it dries rock hard, uh, permanent. You can paint it. Uh, anything sort of you want with it. It can be a material that uh, can go in a kiln and be fired, but you don't necessarily have to. It is a, a very versatile material. Um, lightweight. Uh, you can literally make anything you want out of it. All right. So my suggestion to someone who's never worked with it before is imagining that the lump of clay, let's say I want to do an animal of some type. If I start with anything uh, four-legged, for example, some of our people like dogs or cats or elephants, anything you like. Imagine that blob sort of using your thumb and pulling it out and it grows legs. Imagine your creature simply growing some legs or stretching them out. So we kind of pull clay from somewhere else. This makes the strongest clay that you can have because it's always been attached to itself. All right, kind of have a ninja turtle shape at the moment. Can change very quickly, especially when I start getting in ahead. Well, so far I've got kind of a person. And that's what we want. We don't want to focus on, on the details. If I'm doing a cat, don't start with the whiskers. Start making it to look like a cat first. But I'm actually gonna go with a bit more of like a sea turtle. The sea turtle one is really popular. So what I'm going to do is just take my thumb and sort of define where I want the shell to sort of start and end. And it kind of goes around here. The legs come out from underneath the turtle shell. And I've got, there we go, turtle shell. Head comes out from there, the arms come out from there. If I want to be a little more sea turtle-like, then I flatten, turn this more into like a flipper. There we go. I'm happy with that one. Flatten it to look more like that. And before you know it, you've got yourself your turtle. Eye sockets, you can just take this, this. Now it looks a little funny without eyeballs, but that doesn't take long to fix. You just grab a little bit of extra clay. There we go. You make two equal balls first. Anytime you're trying to make anything symmetrical, make the two pieces first and then stick them in. A lot of times you stick them in first, well, that doesn't really work. They don't look the same. There we go. So that is my turtle. It's quite cute. You can use your tool to put in any of the type of textures on the shell. Maybe you want to put in some interesting textures for the fins. The shell, I recommend you take the tool, you depress it in, and you sort of wiggle it around a bit to define the shape more than just, say, scratching at the top. Scratching at the top usually doesn't look quite as nice as if you sort of wiggle the tool in there and make a defined shape. There we go. that. Great. There's my quick turtle. Great. Well, let's do a bird instead. I like that part. I like squishing it up and watching people's faces. Like, oh, I like that one. All right. Now, here I'm going to do a, a bird. It's just a blob. Again, I imagine the head sort of coming out of the body. And then it starts to grow a beak. And then it can start to grow some tail feathers. So I'm just taking it and squishing it out. And I have the start of my bird. I take 
my tool and define a bit more of the wing and round the belly. And we have sort of a, a decent wing shape that we can work with. Now you can add your feather details, but in about 30 seconds I've come out with my basic shape of my bird. It doesn't take too long to sort of define it if you want it to be a parrot, or if you want it to be a woodpecker, a blue jay, anything you want it to be. Alright, let's squish that up, try it again. So what do we have next? Ooh, a fish. Let's do a fish. So I have a couple of great parrot fish in the tank. Again, I'm stretching it out, flattening where the fins would go. And my fish are sort of fat. <laughs> fat fish is a happy fish. They look something like that shape. And they have gigantic lips. For the fins, I would sort of just cut into the fish a bit and then stand the fin up. Here is where I'd put the eyeball. First I'd make the eye socket, roll a piece of clay, and stick it in. Notice I haven't put any of the scales on, any of those kind of textury things. I want to save that for the end. So there is sort of my fish, fish lips. There we go. Now when, when you want to smooth something like this out, you take the side of your thumb and you slide the side of your thumb along it and that will smooth it out. I like to put in my textures just after I've smoothed it. I've confirmed that I like its shape. There we go. And then move on to the next step. In your kit, you get a variety of different plastic tools with different edges. We have one here that's the scratchy, wetty, wiggly tool. All right, you have little teeth on it. There is another one with sort of a serrated edge that would also work. All right, we want to attach a piece of clay together. So let's say I wanted to put on the fin instead. Well, what I would do is scratch up the surface. I would really sort of rough up both sides. Okay, I scratch it up and then I add some water. I wet it, I wet it, and I take the two pieces and I wiggle them together. Now wiggling is the important part, not the pressing. The wiggling helps the clay to join together Pressing does not. There we go. And that will help it stick way better. Now that my sculpture is sort of nearly finished, I can take other tools like this nice smoothed edge one, and I can use this to sort of mark in other areas to show the fins. Maybe I want to take something a little bit more rounded like this one to put on some scales. So I just depress in sort of a pattern. And make an interesting scale definition. take my next tool like this one and use it to sort of define in here. This one you sort of push things back up and then pull away with the other side. There we go. Defines that fin. You can also spread this stuff nicely. Move that like that. You can take a sharper ended tool and sort of cut the fin into whatever kind of pattern you want. Now if I want to take this and stick it to the end, because I think that would look nice, again, I would scratch it, scratch where the two pieces of clay are going to meet, add a drop of water, and wiggle the piece on. You can also smooth out around it. And now I've got where the top fin was too big, lower fin was too small, I've now fixed it. I can use my sharp toothed one to create in more textures. And there we go. I kind of like that texture for the I'm going to keep going with that. Ooh, cut right here. Pull that up. 
up a bit. And there you go. Now I've only done my fish on one side. You can do your fishes on both sides. Again, don't add too much water. All right. Clay is somewhere between dirt and mud, so if you uh, let it dry out, then it's just dirt in a shape. You can reconstitute it by adding a bit of water until it's completely dry. So if it loses just a bit of moisture, you're good. But once it starts to dry out permanently, it's done. If you make, if you add too much water, then it just turns into mud, and you have to wait for it to dry out a bit before you can do your next one. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. We'll uh, talk again soon. Have a great day.